Welcome to 4.8's Math Moment. Today, students um, learned more about multiplying with decimals, but in this lesson, students learned how to multiply with two numbers that have decimals in them. So two different decimal numbers multiplied by each other. And students also learned about different multiplication properties, how to identify them, and also how to use them when multiplying. So let's look at some examples. The first example is just a regular multiplication problem. It says 9 and 8 tenths times 5 and 9 tenths. So the strategy that I use to help students when they're multiplying with decimals is just to take the decimal out when they're multiplying. And then we'll of course put it back in to uh, make our answer. All right, so I'm just going to multiply like I normally would, okay, and distribute the nine to each of the top um, numbers before working with the five. So I'm gonna take nine times eight, which is 72. Nine times nine, which is 81, plus seven would be 88. Now, anytime I'm done working with one number, I exit out, and I also cross out anything else that went with it. So this 7 was a part of that multiplication of the 9, so I'm going to exit out so I don't get confused. Then the saying that I use is anytime I make an X up above, I make an O down below to help them remember to include that place value and that placeholder. Right? So now I'm just working with the 5, distributing it to the 8, and then to the 9. So 5 times 8 is 40 carry the 4. 5 times 9 is 45, plus 4 is 49. And then I'm just going to add the numbers that I have down below. 0 plus 2 is 2, 8 plus 0 is 8, 8 plus 9 is 17, carry my 1, 1 plus 4 is 5. Now my answer would look, to be, uh, would look like it's 5,782, but because I have decimal numbers that I was working with in my problem, I have to show those decimals in my answer. So what we tell students to do is go back and look at both numbers they were working with. How many total numbers are behind the decimal? Well, in this problem, there's one number behind the decimal, and in this problem, there's one. So total, there are two numbers behind the decimal. One, two. So total in my answer, I want two numbers to be behind the decimal. One behind, two behind. I check to make sure two numbers behind my decimal, yes, just like the two numbers behind my decimal here. So my answer is 57 and 82 hundredths. All right, let's take a look at example two. It says to complete the problem and also name the property used. So when I'm looking at this problem here, I see that I've got seven and two tenths in parentheses. I've got two and three tenths minus one and five tenths. So I see that it also shows me that that equals two separate problems here. It shows seven and two tenths times something minus seven and two tenths times one fifth. Well, when I'm looking at the fact that these equations are both equal to each other, I know that we're using the distributive property. And the reason I know that is because when I have a number outside of a parentheses, that number is distributed hence the word distributive property, okay? It's distributed to each of the numbers inside using multiplication. So there's nothing else in between these numbers that show I'm gonna use a different operation. The parentheses is the only thing keeping them apart. So that's how I know that it's multiplication. So that means I need to take seven and two tenths times two and three tenths. Then I would take seven and two tenths times one and five tenths and I would multiply, all right? Um, and then once I get those two answers and multiplication answers, I could subtract. Now, what we try to show students is that either way that you do it, you should be able to get the same answer. So we're gonna work this side of the problem. Remember, they're equivalent, same thing, all right? So I'm going to show seven and two tenths times two and three tenths. When I do that, I get three times two is six, three times seven, is 21. Because there's nowhere for me to carry the 2, I just drop it down with the 1. I'm done with the 3. There's nothing up above, so I added O down below. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 7 is 14. When I add, I'm going to get 1, 6, 5, 6. I have two total numbers behind the decimal, so I need to have two total numbers behind my um, behind my decimal in my problem as well. So this first part of the problem is 16 and 15.
56 hundredths. Now I can work this side of the problem. 7 and 2 tenths times 1 and 5 tenths. 2 times 5 is 10. 5 times 7 is 35 plus 1 is 36. I get rid of the 5 and the 1 because it went with the 5. Anytime I make an X, I make an O down below. 1 times 2 is 2 and 1 times 7 is 7. Then I'm going to add my numbers up for a final answer of 1080. But again, I have two numbers behind my decimal in my problem, so I need to have two numbers behind my decimal in my answer. So then my answer for this problem is 10 and 80 hundredths. Now that I have both of the answers for the multiplication problems, 7 and 2 tenths times 2 and 3 tenths, and 7 and 2 tenths times 1 and 5 tenths, the last thing I need to do is mul um, excuse me, subtract them to find my answer. So I'm going to take 16 and 56 hundredths minus 10 and 80 hundredths. 6 minus 0 is 6. 5 minus 8 I cannot do, so I need to borrow. Changes it to a 15. 15 minus 8 is 7. I bring down my decimal point. 5 minus 0 is 5. And 1 minus 1 is 0. For a final answer on this side of 5 and 76 hundredths. Now, that was a lot of work. I had to do one multiplication problem, two multiplication problems, then a subtraction problem. All right, so what we try to show the students is that using this method, okay, where we kind of shrink the problem, it looks smaller and it's going to have fewer steps. What we can do is just solve the problem that's inside the parentheses first, then multiply one time, and we should get the same answer. So let's go ahead and try it. We're going to do 2 and 3 tenths minus 1 and 5 tenths. I cannot do 3 minus 5, so I'm going to borrow. 13 minus 5 is 8, and 1 minus 1 is 0. So when I subtract these two amounts, I get 8 tenths. I should be able to take 8 tenths and multiply it by 7 and 2 tenths and get the exact same answer in less steps. Let's try it out. 8 times 2 is 16. Carry the 1. 8 times 7 is 56 plus 1 is 57. I'm done with my 8. I'm done with my 1. I could add a 0 and keep going with my zeros, but I know that zeros, when I multiply anything by 0, it just is a 0. So I really don't even need to continue. This is my final answer as long as I add my decimals in. I have two total numbers behind the decimal in my problem, so I need two total numbers behind my decimal in my answer for a final answer of 5 and 76 hundredths, which matches the other side. So we use the distributive property to show students that if this is the same as a 7 and 2 tenths distributing itself, multiplying by the numbers on the inside. And yes, you can solve it that way, but it takes a few more steps. If you just solve the problem inside the parentheses and then multiply, you will get the same answer. If you have any questions about this lesson, make sure to see your math teacher.